a strong enough word for how I view that team. I think it's yeah. more of a collective, we're going to punk you type attitude. And, and, and I love it about, like, I love that about Alabama right now. Just not just Petty or Herb Jones or Shackford. Man, it's all of them. But that, that's who they are. Everybody's chasing Alabama. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Nate Oates Show brought to you by Tri Green Equipment along with the head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide. I'm Chris Stewart. Coach, another unbelievable week as your squad is able to stay undefeated in SEC play. Yeah, I mean, our guys just keep bringing it. I mean, the offense is getting better. Our defense is getting better, too. It was really good, you know, winning games on both sides of the ball. When, when you're playing that well on both sides of the ball, they end up being big, large margin wins, which we've gotten. So, Really proud of our guys, happy to see the shots are dropping, but really more than that, happy to just see guys locked in to guard and making the effort plays and all that type of stuff. Finished the week off with, again, a dominating performance against LSU, but started it off with an equally impressive win against the Arkansas Razorbacks. Yeah, I mean, they were undefeated in non-conference play, and really talented offensively. You know, Petty came out, shoot, got national player of the week. He, you know, this was a big game for him. I thought he shot the ball really well. I mean, he played great. I mean, he ended up with 17 points and kind of really led us. So happy to see him playing as well as he is. You know, he maybe shot it a little poorly in conference, but I think he's really locked in right now. He's guarding well, he's rebounding well, he's making shots, he's leading. You know, he had to play the point at Kentucky for a while. He's, he's been really good. Shackleford was really good this game too. So. You know, Sha Shaq is hitting. I think those two were both over 50% from three, if I remember right. And I think Shaq had 16 on the night. So, you know, those two guys kind of playing your two and three spots are pretty dynamic duo. It's hard to focus on one or the other. Both shoot it well, both share it well. Petty grabbed four rebounds uh, among your best, I think, in that particular game. So quite a combination. And then, oh, by the way, there's Herbert Jones, who does a little bit of everything. I should move back off that. He does a lot of everything for you. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of, you know, when Quindley was out and Quindley's back now, but Quindley wasn't all the way back this game. You know, his legs weren't totally under him. And he, you know, he's been playing the point for us at 6'8", you know, guard, guarding at a high level, which he's always done, rebounding, making all the effort plays. and. You know, See him leading the break a lot. I mean, he just kind of does everything really well. He's making threes now. I don't think he hit one this game, but he's been hitting threes where people got to be honest, play him honest, and I mean, he's playing great. Juwan Gary, coach, kind of exemplifies what your bench has been because while your starters have been really good, you're getting contributions for everybody who hits the floor. Yeah, this was the first game without Bruner, so, you know, we're going to have different guys step up. We didn't really know who, you know, whether Juwan, Rojas, Keon Ambrose, but shoot the way Juwan played, you know, we just rolled with him, played him some more minutes. Our plus minus was really high when he was in the game. You know, he didn't play like a ton of minutes, but shoot, I mean, I think he ended up with nine points. He almost had uh, double digit scoring right, in, his, in his kind of limited minutes he played. So happy for him, he finished the game well and gave us some really good minutes without Bruner that night. Once again, multiple players in double figure scoring, not surprising considering the team collectively put 90 on the board, but when everybody contributes, boy, it makes that locker room a lot of fun. Yeah, it does really. And you know, the defensively, you look at the halftime score, you know, we held them to 19 and this was a really good offensive team in Arkansas. And I think the defenses are really set the tone for us. Like guys locked into the scouting report, you know, Coach Henry's done a great job getting them ready. They come out, they execute it, they're studying on their own. They play really hard, and they, they're getting it done on the defensive end. And then when you get stopped, it's a lot easier. Our offense looks a lot better when we're flowing in transition a lot. So just got to keep that mindset, keep locking people up, and then the offense comes easy that way. Let's go all access on the Tide's 90-59 to 59 win over the Razorbacks. To Shaq, the drive, to Reese, again tries and hits it. Throws it left, Petty, fires, three, bottom, good start for John Petty. Uh, right there. Herb does a great job right there, driving the left side of the lane, the little finger roll, kicks it into the corner, Herb makes a three, drives into the lane, plays through contact, right handed shot is good. good Gary gets a steal, Jawan Gary driving to the rim, what's in the layup is good. 
numbers. Doesn't matter. Teddy, right side, three. Bottom. To Petty. Steps to his left. Shoots a three. And did you think he was really going to miss? No. Seven foot three player. Oh my goodness. Big for the all time leader. Three points. Perfect. Welcome back to the Nate Oates Show, brought to you by Tri Green Equipment. You've been you've been putting it to good use, hadn't you? I, I was going to say, I got to give a shout out to my guy Mike Underwood, who just got me a gator. Went and got myself a gator from him to go up and back from uh, my house down to the lake. It's best customer service you'll ever see. So, if you're looking for anything Tri Green sells, you got to go with them. You guys mowing down the competition right we, now we, yeah, we as well. Mowing looking the good. competition down. The uh, LSU game was a. Uh, a chance. I mean, it was a fun game. Shoot when you're shooting the ball like we shot at that game. It was everything looks easy that game. John Petty really setting the tone for you right out of the gate. I mean, that was kind of a crazy display. I mean, he's he's an unbelievable shooter. I think he ends the game eight for ten for three, and we had six threes before the first media timeout. It was eighteen to four before they knew what hit him. So you know, and Petty kind of started that whole deal, hit that first one right out of the gate, and then just kind of kept it going. You know. Primo hits three for three, and nobody was paying attention to it, partly, yeah, because Petty, JP had made four before the first media timeout. Yeah, no, it was, yeah, it was nuts. I mean, that's not the first time he's hit four before the first media timeout. It's the first time in the SEC game I've seen it. It was Samford was last year, but you, know, you saw Shaq passing the ball there. I thought the ball moved really well. We had 20 assists. Shaq had eight of them. So when the ball's moving, you're making shots. It, you don't have to do a whole lot of coaching there on the sideline. You let the guys, uh, and they're playing super unselfish. So. Senior sets the, the stage and then the freshman picks up. Yeah, I mean, you've seen, you know, Primo showed what he could do on the road at Auburn, you know, 14 out of the first 16 at Auburn, and he comes in and hits a bunch to go with Petty's. I mean, you know, him, Quinterly, and Petty, I think, combined to go 20 of 25, which is nuts to have three guys shoot that high percentage all in the same game. So, really happy with the way Primo's playing. You know, defensively, he's given us a lift, too, because his length, his athleticism, he's really locked in, kind of treats himself like a pro with his preparation, his study, so couldn't be happier for the kid. And the length, as well as the athleticism that your squad has, and certainly Herb exemplifies that at 6'6", 6'7", coach, it's just a tough matchup for the opposition. Yeah, I mean, Herb, like I said, like Herb's been playing a lot of point for us. You know, he's finished, he finished great this game. You know, if we can get him to continue to finish at this level the way he takes the rim and hit another three this game, right on cue, you know, people got to play him now. I mean, he's worked really hard on the shooting over the summer, so if you're going to sag off him, he's going to hit on you. If you're going to come up on him, he seems to be able to get in the lane whenever he wants. Speaking of right on cue, JQ, tremendous. He, he did get past midcourt before he let that one fly, but not much. Yeah, uh, he was six or seven, if I remember. And the only one he missed, he was wide open, sat there and stared at for like three <laughs> seconds. Couldn't believe he was that open. Like, I mean, he could have gone seven to seven easy if he just shot that one like yeah that one in the corner was great I mean that was a couple of them right there in front of our bench our bench was going nuts when he hit those ones in the corner but he's playing well for us gets the ball in the paint whenever we want and you know teams can't if you're gonna guard him you gotta I mean just went six or seven from three you got to get up into him with as quick as he is and the way his handle is if you're gonna get up into him he's gonna be able to get in the lane and spray the ball out whenever he wants so three guys over to those were the three 20 of 25 from three and all three of them over 20 20 points, so, and, and that's not kind of, Shaq had eight assists. I mean, Shaq's right. one of the best scorers in the league, and we, you know, put up over 100 and without Shaq even shooting the ball like, like he normally would, so I think our firepower's there. Offensively, we're showing it. Defensively, we were great. I mean, we really liked them. As good as our offensive numbers were against LSU, for the first 30 minutes before we got, you know, the walk-ons and whatever in, our defensive numbers were just as good, if not better, than our offensive numbers were. So we've got this thing going really well on both sides of the ball right now. 
In case you missed it, Bama fans, a look back as the tide rolls 105-75 in Baton Rouge. The, the, the two teams in the SEC that are most difficult to defend, Alabama and LSU. This one will be up and down, high scoring, should be a fun one. And we're glad you're with us tonight. Keep the momentum going. I remember why we went straight job. I got to tell you guys we went straight job. Yeah. Yeah. I need an evaluation from a coach on, on this shooting. First of all, the shot is successful. But the shot selection is not exactly what you normally yeah, talk you know, about. I, uh, I gotta get, you got to get warmed up first. You can't just go right to the three-point line. They're, they're recording me in my warm-up, and by the okay. time I'm warmed up, the players are ready to shoot, and I can never get my threes in. So it's not fair that they only videotape me for like three. But you did see they were all going in. They were. Swish, and, they were swish. and as you pointed out before we went on air, they were going in from what was the three-point line. That is true. When Back you and I when were I in played, school. it was like the high school three-point line. Yes. Now they moved it twice since then, so I, I got to adjust my range a little bit better and getting a little older. You know, don't have as much athleticism as maybe I used to. So layups, threes, or free throws—that's the philosophy. Yeah, when right? I played, I was like mid-range shooter. But I got you. I, we didn't have an analytics guy coaching me, so you didn't have I, so I, didn't, you, I didn't know anybody. You didn't have social media either then, but we got it now. Let's check out what they're saying. Yeah, are you smiling under the mask? Uh, I'm going to guess yes. Big boss, yeah. He's yeah. happy I got the mask on. Exactly sure, right. You know. Coach Burton, pleased with that. Uh, Seth Davis, you're getting, getting a lot of national recognition, Yeah, coach. he wrote a nice uh, analytics article on us earlier in the week, so he's uh, showing us a little off. It's nice to get the national guys paying attention to Alabama basketball. SEC Network paying attention. We know that. Yeah, I like the, I like the picture. He's definitely on fire. He had 23 weeks, broke our own record. So if it gets broke again, it better be by us. That's exactly right. Trying to add to it. Uh, the Heisman Trophy winner. I like it. I didn't see that tweet. Yeah. I, I don't, I still, I'm keeping social media off my phone for the end, to the end of the season. So every once in a while I'll go on my computer, but. That's I'd, why we're here for you, coach. Making sure you see the. Uh, Heisman Trophy winner, big yeah, time. That is big indeed. And oh, OJ Howard, a good one from Tied football years past as well, reaching out to you. Yeah, we got old, old time. Uh, I shouldn't say old, old time, but you know, some pre previous football players, current ones and veterans. previous ones. Veterans, there's the word I'm looking for. It's nice to see they're all paying attention to us now. Even the team mascot, Big Al, yes, wanted to get in on the can. act. You can shoot three. Come on, we'll get you in. Get yeah, I don't know if it's Mitzel. Let him shoot it or not. May not. Aaron Torres with uh, Kentucky Sports Radio. That's Those nice analytics. One. Yeah, that is nice. Uh, forget best team in the SEC, top ten. Look I, again. You got to focus on and keep the team focused on next day, next practice, everything. But it is great to see the national I attention. I see he, tw he tweeted that after we were six and all. Then when we went to seven and all, I agree with him. Nobody was playing better. I mean, when you shoot like we did from three, yeah. And the next one after that, it was even better. So we got we got to stay locked in though. Our guys. They can't let let it get to their heads. They got to stay humble. I told them today, there's a reason you guys are shooting it as well as you are. You're in the gym. Right. Let's not forget that. You know, you're shooting it well. Don't quit doing what you've been doing. Stay in the gym. Get in. Get your shots up at night. Get them up after practice. And they're good. They've been great about that. Petty's in. Shaq's in. Primo's in. Guys are getting, you know, Quinterly's in. They're all got a bunch of gym rats. Bruner's even getting some shots up. This, so he's not looking too bad. He's a weak Eight days post uh, post surgery, he's starting to get some shots up already. So, it's looking good. Hopefully, we'll see him back soon. But as you mentioned, John Petty leading the charge right now. He'll let it fly. Bottom. John Petty for three. I Riley to himself. Back to JP. Three ball. First field. Watch right now. One of my favorites was the Oklahoma game, the Big Twelve. We played Trey Young. 
and how I walked out in the crowd, it was just so bright with all the white shirts, it was filled to the top. But that was probably one of the most hype games I've been in. When this guy on the team, it's probably gonna be out of me and D Miles. It don't even be the fact that he say anything fun. I think it's just his accent from where he from and, and the type of language they use up there is funny. So I'll probably say me or D Miles. Yeah, I'm the best cook on the team by far. I cooked the whole dish of taco salad. You know, I was on the grill. I grilled some steaks, pork chops, chicken, hot dogs, along with some, some spinach, and I cooked a lot of stuff, so I'm pretty good on the stove. I got pictures of, pictures of my family, everybody in my locker, so when it's time for game time, or when I feel like I'm going to no slump, I just look at them and, and it immediately motivates me to keep going. Coach, great to see all of your young men succeed, but especially JP. A guy that, that I know you think a lot of. Yeah, I, I, I do. I really want, I mean, he decided to come back and do something special. So you really want him to have made the right decision. So you're really pulling for him to get it all together, play well, us to win. So, yeah, I'm really happy for the way he's playing right now. Like, super, I text him, proud of him, tell him that. It's good. We need him to lead. I mean, he's, and he is. He's doing a good job leading, talking to the guys. And, you know, between him, her, Bruno, Reese, those guys are doing a great job. But, so he talks about, he's actually healthy either. He talks about taco salad, he eats salad every meal. So, <laughs> he, I, I didn't know he was a cook, though. I'm gonna have him cook me some. He's cooking up some threes for the he, uh, SEC teams. I see that for sure. He is cooking without question right now. We're gonna see if you're cooking on a trivia game when we come back here on the Nate Oat Show, brought to you by Tri Green Equipment. Love playing the game show with Coach. This week it's trivia. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get right into it, Coach. This Alabama player won two Alabama Mr. Basketball Awards during his high school career. John Petty. Bingo. Nailed it. Very well done. This player's ambidextrous. I got a couple I thought that were. I, I think uh, I think Primo might be. Let's see. I was oh. going to say Shaq, too. Yeah. But I, you know what? You might want to check on that. Pretty good with the left hand, we know that. The, this player majoring in chemical engineering. Tyler Barnes. Got? Tyler Barnes, it's a good call right there. Uh, these two created the Jelly Fam. Cornerly Brothers. There you go. There we go. That was Jay and Jay. One. All right, which player has a dog named Cho? Is that Herb? Wow. Because yeah, that's his uh, very, Instagram. Very, very nicely done. This Young player Joe. was a former quarterback. Terry Smiles. Wow. Look at that, man. Wow. That, that's a great guess, but I'd have never guessed that one. That was really good. All right. Uh, this player's favorite movies, all Disney movies. Do you know Al that one? Alex Reese. Alex Reese. I think you nailed it. Oh, it was not. It's Keanu Ambrose Hilton. Dang. He's, he's right. from Canada. Disney's big up there, too, I guess, huh? Probably so. We're back with more <laughs> in just a moment. There's the home water of the Alabama rowing team. It's the Black Warrior River on a beautiful day in Tuscaloosa. One of the great scenes in and around. I've seen, I've seen them out there. I, I lived on a river up in uh, Buffalo. Now I live on a lake. The lake, lake's a little bit nicer to live on than the river, I think, here. We're really glad you feel that way because we're really glad you're, you're in Tuscaloosa. Tough matchups again. Typical in the SEC yeah. with Mississippi State and Kentucky coming up. Yeah, I mean, before the last game, you know, it's, they didn't play great against Ole Miss in a big rival game. But before that, they were two possessions away from being undefeated in the uh, SEC Mississippi State was. Right. And it, just like previous, they're one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the league. They play, they really start two centers. I mean, they got big, strong guys playing inside at the four. Without Bruner, we're going to really get tested, you know, inside. So Herb's going to have to play great. Our guards are going to have to rebound. We're going to have to do a really good job with their bigs inside. And then they got two guards that are – Leading scores, you know, Molnar and Stewart. So our guards are going to have to bring it, but they're a good team. We're going to have to play. I mean, it's not a whole lot of easy games in the SEC. Sure. Well, and Coach, too, you've gone from being the hunter to being the hunted now. You get Kentucky to rematch, and you're not going to sneak up on them. No, I don't think so after beating them at Rupp. So they, they lost a tough one against Auburn. Shoot, they had it. Auburn came back. Or Georgia, my fault. They lost a tough one against Georgia that I watched last night, and they just – 
came back lost on a shoot play with like a second to go. So they're 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 going to be hungry. They're they're in bad of a need of a win, and they're they're a talented team, and we know that. So got two tough ones coming up this week. Hopefully our guys answer the bell like they did before. Always appreciate the time, Coach. We appreciate you joining us, and we'll see you next time right here on the Nate Oates Show. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.